in this training, we are going to go over the travel request process and what you need to know to standardize the way that people start in your sales process. So let's get started. So the Opus method for the travel request process, you guys may have heard of me call this the travel request blueprint. Doesn't really matter what you call it. It's really around standardizing the way that you accept people into initiating work in your travel business. And this is really going to cover three areas of the request, which is the accepting inquiries, discovery, and then actual re research and pricing. So who this works for are, it's really a good fit for those clients that you have that are requesting custom fit or individual custom travel requester quotes. Or if you have group leaders who want you to put together a group trip, the objective is for you to standardize the way that you accept those. Doesn't matter where they come from, right? It could come from Messenger, phone, you know, Facebook, uh, any social media platform. Doesn't matter where it initiates. But once somebody has said, I want you to do some work relative to researching a trip or providing a quote, you want to send them to a central location. So we'll talk about what that looks like. What this process of the does not work well for are trips that you already want to plan, group trips that you want to plan. So let's say you want to, as an advisor, you want to uh, put together a trip to Dubai, right? You don't start here. You're going to start at another part of the phase. So this, again, it works really well for individual clients that you have that want custom trips or they want you to design a group trip on their behalf. So here's the general flow. Pink is client and throughout all of the subsequent trainings on Opus, you're going to find that we'll refer to our clients as the pink area and the advisor as the blue area. So a client's going to go to a central location, um, which will get set up in, in any one of the systems that you decide to use, but you'll set, the client will submit their request. That request, after they submit the request, they will then get a opportunity to book a discovery call with you if that's a part of what you do. Once that request gets submitted, the workflow behind the scenes should start to initiate. There should be some notification that the, the advisor gets usually through email that lets them know that a new submission has entered their queue. Then what should happen is if the client has actually booked the booked this discovery call, the agent will start preparing for that discovery call. I actually have a separate training all around discovery call and what you need to include. So I want you to check out that training. A link to that is in this lesson um, and it's called the discovery call training. It goes all about what you need to do to pre prepare for the call and actually how to conduct the call, which is the next step. So the client's gonna go, the next action they're gonna take is they're gonna actually attend the discovery call after you prepared. You know, hopefully you've given yourself enough time to prepare. You're going to actually conduct the call. Inside of the call proper, you're going to go over their requirements, make sure that you have an understanding, but your real objective is to position your design fee, let them know that you have a design fee, and then ask them if, if they want to proceed. If they want to proceed, then my recommendation is inside of that call, schedule the follow-up call. I traditionally schedule that call about three to five days after I do the discovery call. So that gives me time to um, do my research. If it's going to take you longer, then schedule it out a week. Whatever your time amount is on the process, then that's what you wanna actually schedule the call because there's nothing more exciting for a client to know that, listen, hey, I just did this, I'm gonna pay a fee, and then you know, in five days, three days, whatever that number is, I'm gonna actually meet to, to go over my you know dream trip with, with this advisor. So I recommend scheduling that call um, right when you're in the discovery call. Then once the call is complete, then you'll go and update the call notes to make sure that you have all the information that you gathered during the call, that you update the notes about the contact inside of the call. Now, if you're real savvy, you can do this as you go. 
I like to really focus on the call. So I actually have a document that I go through that takes the call and then goes through the actual requirements, ask my questions and all of that. All of that's available inside of the discovery call training. But once you update the notes inside of the call record of whichever system you're using, you want to then send out meeting notes. Um, you want to send out, I usually will send out meeting notes with my invoice um, as an email, but ultimately you need to create the invoice that covers your design fee, send it out via email to them, make sure that the client ex pays the invoice and then it, you start the work. And then once you start the work, it ends the process. That pretty much concludes the travel request process in terms of the steps. Here are some considerations and experience that we just went over. Your client should pretty much, it should be pretty simple for them, right? They, they get a URL, they input their trip requirements, they fill out a form, they book their call and boom, they're done. What you've got to be able to do before you actually start this process is you've got to be thinking about some things in your business that you want to do. What information do you want to be collecting from your clients? We have a comprehensive trip request form or travel request form that we use. We'll make that available to our clients so you can see the fields that we're using. And you'll either want to augment that with your own special requirements for information that you want to capture, but you absolutely want to go through the process of defining the what you want to collect from your clients. Then you want to decide what your availability is going to be on your calendar for these discovery calls. I traditionally book about two hours a day, same time every day. Um, I've got a lot of things going on as I'm sure you all do as well. So, you know, my entire day is not available for uh, discovery calls. So you want to time block your availability. And, and, and there's something really great about time blocking your availability is when you make, when you're intentional about the time you make yourself available and say, I'm going to be available between six and eight or eight and 10 or whatever that time is going to be. You know, I think it sort of sends out a message to the universe that says, I need to fill this space with this type of person. And it's rare that when I've blocked out time, I don't actually hit it because that, that, that sort of sets in motion the activity I need to do to actually get those appointments booked. So the next thing that you want to make sure that you make a decision about is how much you're going to charge for your design fee in that discovery call. And if you guys have taken any of my previous training around agency fees, I really recommend that you, you know, start at nothing less than a hundred love for you to be at 250. I understand that everybody's not there yet, but certainly be intentional about how much you're going to be charging for that design fee before you do your first discovery call. And then obviously the process by which you do your uh, preparation. So again, in that training, I go all over how to prep for the call and then ultimately how to conduct the call. So again, remembering what your objectives are, it's to standardize the process, standardize the way that you collect the requirements for your trip, make sure you prepare in a consistent way so that you can show up as a rock star and an authority figure on your call, make sure that you have an approval process for uh, collecting payments for your design fee, um, what you're going, you know, what your design fee covers and does not cover, and then make sure that you actually collect. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. You can post a question inside of this lesson or send us an email and we'll get right back to you. I will see you in the next lesson. Talk to you soon.